Next, let's talk about purine and pyrimidine synthesis. Now, these pathways can be a little bit complicated, but they're important to know because physicians target specific steps in these pathways when treating cancer. Many chemotherapeutic agents inhibit enzymes in this pathway, and we'll go over that. But the general idea is this. Cancer cells grow and divide much more rapidly than normal human tissues. Therefore, a good strategy is to use drugs which inhibit DNA synthesis, therefore selectively killing cancer cells. However, this is not totally specific. As you may know, cancer chemotherapeutic agents also target other tissues of the body, namely the hair follicle, the gastrointestinal tract, and the immune system. Cells within each of these systems divide rapidly, and so they are also impaired and also killed when a patient receives chemotherapeutic agents. This results in features that are often associated with cancer patients, namely hair loss or alopecia, vomiting and diarrhea, and also mucosal sores such as in the mouth, and immunosuppression. In the next slide, we'll talk about these different chemotherapeutic agents and where exactly in the pathway they act. But first, let's just look at the chemical structures of purine precursors and pyrimidine precursors. So here's the purine precursor. It's called IMP, or inosine monophosphate. Pyrimidine, on the other hand, is created by combining orotic acid, or orotate, with PRPP, which is 5-phosphoribosyl-1-pyrophosphate. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the pathways. So here is orotic acid, or orotate. Here is PRPP. Here we have inosine monophosphate. And again, that's the precursor for adenine and guanine, which here is shown in its monophosphate form. Here we have the pyrimidines, uracil, here's cytosine, and here's thymine. Next, let's talk about those chemotherapeutic agents. The first is hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea inhibits ribonucleotide reductase. Ribonucleotide reductase is required in four steps. It's required here, 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 and here. Hydroxyurea will inhibit each of these steps. The next is 6-mercaptopurine, or 6-MP. 6-MP blocks de novo purine synthesis, and it acts here. The next is 5-fluorouracil, or 5-FU. 5-FU inhibits thymidylate synthase, which is right here. The next is methotrexate. Methotrexate inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, which is found here. And finally, there's something called trimethoprim, or TMP, which also inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, but in bacteria. This is actually an antibiotic. While we're on the topic of purine and pyrimidine synthesis pathways, I'll briefly mention orotic aciduria. Orotic aciduria is a disease that results from an inability to convert orotic acid to UMP, uracil monophosphate. Orotic acid accumulates, and you can find it in the urine, and it also presents in infants as failure to thrive. The disease is autosomal recessive. Next, let's talk about the purine salvage pathways. Again, this is a complicated pathway, but let's just focus on a few key enzymes that are associated with diseases. The first is adenosine deaminase, or ADA. ADA in this figure is represented by the 3 here. ADA is involved in the conversion of adenosine to inosine. When ADA is absent or deficient, adenosine begins to accumulate and negatively feeds back and inhibits ribonucleotide reductase, which is the enzyme that produced it. If you remember from a few slides back, ribonucleotide reductase is responsible for the synthesis of all nucleotides. In the presence of high levels of adenosine, ribonucleotide reductase is inhibited and no other nucleotides can be produced. Cells which undergo high levels of division, such as those of the immune system, are most significantly affected. In the absence of nucleotides, they cannot produce new DNA and therefore they die. In humans, this presents in the clinical syndrome known as Severe Combined Immunofficiency Disease, or SCID. The other enzyme of importance here is HGPRT, which stands for hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, which is represented by the numbers 1 here. HGPRT is involved in the conversion of guanine to GMP and hypoxanthine to IMP. In the absence of HGPRT, guanine, and hypoxanthine begin to accumulate, and they are shuttled in this direction, toward uric acid. Accumulating uric acid in the bodies results in some pretty odd behavioral characteristics. This often affects children and results in nail-biting, self-mutilation, and other behavioral problems. The enzyme that's responsible for this conversion is known as xanthine oxidase, and it's represented by the numbers 4 here. One thing that clinicians can do is give a drug known as allopurinol, which inhibits xanthine oxidase here and here, and decreases the level of uric acid in the blood.